The Maiden of the Forest by Pumpkin Moose 22, Chapter 13. The manor was quaint, the objects inside proclaiming that those who lived here lived comfortably. The trinkets and various objects scattered about caused Kiss to summarise the lady of the house may be in the trade business. Walking into the dressing room, Kit couldn't help but sense that the dwelling was a little underkept, just like the outside. The floors were swept and the places had been dusted, but cobwebs were still just visible in the corners, almost as if the housekeeper had neglected to remove them. The ground rug on which he now stood was faded and old, but the pattern was rather attractive. Roses a dull pink and the grey vine, green vines a greyish green. Kit listened as the singing continued to fill the house. It sounded as if it was coming from the attic. Lavender's green, dilly dilly, lavender's blue. You shall love me, dilly dilly, for I love you. The singing stopped. Kit surmised the captain had found where the girl was. His heart began to pound in his chest. He had taken the shoe from the pillow a footman was holding when he went inside. He caressed the slipper, the glass seeming to soothe him in a strange way. He had held it so many times in the past, but had never given off the faint warmth it was now. Kit didn't know any better. He would think it was radiating with heat because it recognised its owner was near. He didn't know where that strange thought had come from, but it oddly made sense. He heard a faint conversation and then silence. Twisting around, he looked at his reflection in the mirror hanging over a large fireplace. The man staring back at him had a hopeful look in his eyes and a slight frown. Inside his body was experiencing a stranger way of chaotic harmony. While his heart was pumping uncontrollably, his stomach was churning uncontrollably. And then everything stopped as his ears picked the shuffle of soft steps on the rug. He twisted, his eyes landed on the reflection of a girl in the mirror and he twisted around. Her blue dress was covered in dirt, particularly at the bottom, and her pale skin seemed to be lightly caked in ash. Her blonde hair was pulled back into a messy braid, stray pieces hanging out everywhere. Her appearance was definitely not one of a princess, but of a servant. She had looked worse for wear, covered in dirt and dressed in rags, her brown eyes large, displaying to Kit even though she was putting on a brave face, inwardly she was petrified. Even so, that didn't deter her from smiling and dipping into a gracious curtsy. Despite the drastic change in her appearance, Kit recognised her immediately. Who are you? He implored, hoping that now, after everything, she'd finally tell him what he'd been desperately longing for. I am Cinderella, she said confidently, her eyes never leaving his. Finally, he had a name! Strange as it was, Kit couldn't help but feel relieved. Your Majesty, she breathed. I am no princess. That much was obvious, but Kit didn't care about titles. He could only think how gorgeous she was as she walked towards him. She continued. I have no carriage, no parents, no dowry. I do not even know if that beautiful slipper will fit. Kit grinned at this, for he knew it would. he would. Why would it not? From the moment he saw her, he knew that this was the girl he had met in the forest and danced with at the ball. But Cinderella paused. If it does, will you take me as I am? An honest country girl who loves you. Kit's heart swelled to nearly bursting. Of course I will, he said without a hint of hesitation. But only if you will take me as I am. An apprentice to learning his trade. She smiled and Kit couldn't help but think it was the most adorable expression in the entire world. Only she could understand the little reference and he was happy to see her aunt dance a bit from it. Please, he invited, offering her to take a seat in the nearest chair beside him. Bowing her head, she gingerly walked over and sat as requested. Kneeling down, Kit took a hold of her ankle. She sucked in her breath as the connection of their skin caused both of their souls to quake. Kit slipped the shoe without any restrictions. The glass custom made for her foot as he knew it would be. The warmth of the shoe relaxed as it encased her foot, the second confirmation to him that it recognised its owner. Cinderella smiled down at him, and he smiled up at her, his whole soul purring in contentment. He stood, helping her to her feet. He vaguely noticed that her hands were rough and coarse, unlike they had felt at the ball. 
but her beauty was just as enchanting as it had been on that night, and instinctively, he wrapped his fingers around the base of her neck. The desire to kiss her consuming him, he bent down to claim her lips. Bang! The two pulled apart just before their lips could touch, as shouts echoed from the hallway. Cinderella! A young woman shouted in the hall entranceway. Ella! My dear sister! I'm sorry. So sorry, her companion said. Both were dressed in an overabundance of colour, and Kit recognised them immediately as the Tremaine sisters, who had worn such ridiculous dresses to the ball. Wait, did one of them just say sister? These were her sisters? But they looked nothing alike. And why was their manner so com completely the opposite of her? Why were they dressed in such finery while she was dressed in rags? There were a lot of things that needed to be cleared up, but Kit recognised now it wasn't the time or place. A more private setting would do. Somewhere far away from here. He glanced at Cinderella, looking back at the stepsisters and the Grand Duke, who had come around the corner to stare at the two of them. The three hastily paid their respects, curtsying and bowing after seeing their king's eyes upon them. Cinderella bent down and removed the glass slipper from her foot, holding on to Kit for support. Kit looked her into her eyes and saw happiness, relief and gratitude radiating from them. Shall we? he asked. She nodded. Reaching for her hand, he curled his fingers around it and gently guided her out of the room. At the front doors, Kit noticed Captain Alistair and grinned. The captain's return smile faded as he looked past Kit's shoulder. Desiring to see what he was looking at, Kit turned at the same time as Cinderella. The lady of the house was staring on the st standing on the stairs, looking down upon the scene in contempt. A vast amount of pressure filled the entire room as Cinderella stared up at the woman with unblinking eyes. Kit could tell a silent conversation was being held, like a battle on its last leg, about to be determined by two very strong opponents. And then Cinderella said, I forgive you. The pressure snapped as she returned her head back on the woman, gently guiding Kit out of the house. Bewildered as well as suspicious as to what might have just taken place, Kit gently squeezed her hand. She squeezed back. The royal guard couldn't contain their grins at the sight of the king emerging hand in hand with a woman holding the glass slipper. Some even cheered. Kit couldn't help grinning over their antics. Victor, he called. The man turned his horse around out of the gathered formation. Yes, your majesty? Please return to the palace and send for a carriage at once. Kit ordered, let them know what has taken place here. It would be my honour, sire. He happily obliged, turning his steed and disappearing onto the main road. Kit turned to Cinderella. What would you like to do while we wait? Her eyes were on the ground, her feet shuffling in the dirt. Whatever his majesty desires is fine with me. Kit frowned a bit. She obviously didn't like all this attention. Catching Captain Alistair's eyes, he said. Captain, the lady and I are going to take a walk. Come and alert us when the carriage arrives. As you wish, your highness captain said, bowing. Come, he invited, gently guiding her away from the soldiers. He led her down a pathway that appeared to wrap around the side of the house. It wasn't until they left the soldiers' prying eyes that Cinderella's shoulders began to shake. Slightly alarmed, Kit looked at her. Tears were pouring from her eyes, trailing down her cheeks and spilling onto her dress. Not knowing what else to do, Kit pulled her into his chest, wrapping his arms around her. It was then that he noticed how incredibly thin she was. Her appearance had been petite, but now that he held her, he could feel how her dress hung loosely about her waist. The shaking of her body reminded him of a trembling leaf, thin, fragile, and capable of breaking under too much pressure. Her hand still clasped the slipper, which was now against Kit's chest, but he didn't care how uncomfortable it was. The shoe had brought them together, and it was obvious to him that from the way she clung to it, it was just as important to her as it was to him. Her forehead rested against his shoulder, and she cried. Kit lifted his hand and stroked her golden hair. Though covered in ash, it was soft to the touch. What on earth had she been through? He wondered, why was she so frail and filthy? I'm sorry, she gasped, suddenly pulling out of his embrace. I lost control of myself. Oh, I've, I've made a mess of your jacket. Kit looked down at his chest, which was indeed dirty. It doesn't matter, he said, looking back up at her tear-stained face. He reached out, stroking his thumb across her cheeks. 
What matters is that I have finally found you. She let out a strangled sob, her tears redoubling. Yes, but... She pulled away from him and started walking towards the stone courtyard at the back of the house. Kit followed after her, unwilling to let her out of his sight again. She paused with her back to him after passing through a stone arch. Now that you've found me, I can't help but think you would see me differently. She confessed in a strangled whisper. Kit couldn't believe that she would think of him to be so shallow. Cinderella, how could I ever see you differently when I love you? She turned around. What? She breathed, her wide brown eyes searching his face. Kit smiled, shaking his head. My dear lady, you have enchanted me since the moment I met you back in the woods. You were positively stunning that night of the ball. But the person I fell in love with was a good, honest country girl. I told you I would take you as you are, and I mean that. And to show you that I mean that, I will ask you now, in this charming, slightly untended garden, something I have been longing to ask for a long time. Taking her coarse hand, he got down on one knee. Will you, my precious, darling Cinderella, take me as I am, an apprentice still learning his trade, and marry me? He looked up into her face, his whole soul displayed openly before her. He had placed himself on the line, kneeling before her, pleading for her to accept him. He prayed she could see the conviction of how much he needed her. He waited on bated breath, his heart slamming against his chest, as he watched her search his eyes for an unknown measure of time. Of course I will, Mr. Kit. She gasped, her face lighting with joy. Elation propelled Kit to his feet. Grabbing her waist, he lifted her into the air, twisting her around. As she laughed, her voice echoing across the grounds, and Kit's men shared warm smiles from the noise. Kit set her down for a moment later and embraced her. Pulling apart just enough to cup her cheek, he searched her eyes. You have made me the happiest man in all of Eretus, he whispered, and you have saved me from a life I never thought I would be saved from, she replied, leaning her cheek into his caress. Searching her face, seeing how beautiful she was, Kit held, beheld her with tenderness. Leaning forward, he closed his eyes. A small, excited breath escaped him, and then her lips met his. They were smooth, soft, and tasted like strawberries, their shape and mould fitting against his in perfect harmony. This was his first kiss, and was therefore taken with delicate care, being soft and gentle. He pulled away from her, searching her eyes. They were dancing, both displaying a slightly embarrassed grin and a light giggle escaped from Cinderella as she bit her lower lip. Kit found her positively adorable. I love you, Cinderella, he muttered. Another slight giggle escaped her. <laughs> Ella. I'm sorry? My name is really Ella, she empathised. Kit quirked his head a little. Ella? That is a little different from Cinderella, don't you think? Ella blushed lightly. Before she could respond, there was a series of squeaking at their feet. Kit watched in wonder as Ella's entire expression filled with pure delight, and she stooped down. Hello there, she laughed, addressing to Kit's astonishment four mice. The little creatures let out several excited squeaks, scurrying around. One of them, large and brown, had a chunk of what appeared to be cheese in his mouth. Ella chuckled. Gus, gus, I find it hard to understand you when your mouth is full. Ella's Kit's eyes widened when he spotted one of the mice, a white one with a few brown spots, swat the one carrying the cheese as if to reprimand him. The brown mouse then gave the white one a disgruntled look before sitting on his hindquarters and removing the cheese from its mouth. Squeaking, it addressed Ella, who nodded back. I see. Thank you so much, Gus Gus. They wouldn't have been able to open the window without you, and Kit never would have found me if you hadn't. I beg your pardon? Kit asked, unable to contain his curiosity any further. Kit, what? Ella finally remembered herself. Gasping, she, t her face turning to tomato red, she leapt up. Oh my gosh, um, I, that is... She shuffled her feet, unable to meet him in the eye. Your Majesty, these are my friends. 
Kit blinked a couple of times and then looked down at the mice that looked up at him with just as much curiosity. Your friends, you say? He asked, bending down so he could get a better look at them. Do they have names? A surprised reply came from Ella as she crouched down. Um, yes. This is Jacqueline, Gus Gus, Matilda and Teddy. A pleasure to meet all of you, Kit said, and to his shock, the mice bowed. They know you're the king, Ella explained. I told them all about you. Did you now? And what was this about them opening a window? Oh, well, the window was closed originally when I was singing up in the attic. They opened it and my voice must have carried. I didn't know who was visiting the house, but I figured it wasn't for me since no one has called for me in years. Kit then realised that if the mice hadn't acted, he never would have found Ella. They would have left and he would very well have had to marry Princess Shalina. Then these mice have my deepest thanks, he said, inclining his head to them, for I never would have found you had they not done what they did. Ella smiled kindly down at her little friends. They have always watched over me, ever since I was a little girl. Then they must come to the, to the palace with us, Kit firmly replied. Oh, but would that be allowed? Ella asked hesitantly. Kit smiled. Ella, he said gently, I'm the king. It's allowed. She chuckled. Oh, right. But won't there be some who oppose me of having mice as friends? There may be, but those people don't matter. These mice helped bring us together, and therefore under my protection. Besides, the palace is big enough to accommodate them, I'm sure. Ella let out a happy laugh before wrapping her arms around him. Oh, thank you, she cried. No, my darling, he muttered. Thank you. A small cough and the two stepped away to find Captain Alistair grinning in the stone archway. The carriage has arrived, your majesty. Kit replied, thank you, Alistair. Ella, besides your friends, is there anything else you'd like to bring? Ella paused, suddenly sheepish. I have a few possessions, if it isn't too much trouble to wait while I fetch them. Kit kissed her cheek. It would be no trouble at all, he assured. Ella blushed. Right. Oh, and can Mr. Goose and Mr. Lizard and Galahad come too? More animal friends. Of course they can, Kit replied. But I'd like to be introduced to them, if that's all right. Ella's happy expression warmed his heart. Oh, I'm sure I'd love to introduce you. Come on. Mr. Goose is over there and Mr. Lizard should be somewhere around here. Galahad is in the stable. Galahad must be her horse. We'll be along in a moment, Captain, Kit said as Ella took her his hand and walked around to where the large white goose was wandering around the yard. After making introductions, Kit was again astonished when the goose also bowed its head to him. Ella didn't seem the least surprised by the bird's intelligence. Fascinated, he watched as she invited Mr. Goose to come with them to the palace and the bird flapped his wings before waddling closer to them. Now, where is Mr. Lizard? Ella muttered, wandering around the garden wall. A green lizard suddenly came scurrying from an open hole, rushing towards them with great haste. There you are! Ella laughed, holding out her hand. The lizard crawled onto her palm. Mr. Lizard, this is Mr. Kit, the king. The lizard reared onto its back legs and bowed. Kit couldn't help but laugh as he inclined his head. A pleasure to meet you too, sir, he said. Mr. Lizard, would you like to come and live with us at the palace? The gardens are quite lovely and I think you'll find them to your liking. The lizard nodded his head enthusiastically. Ella grinned in delight. Then it's decided. Come, let's go and get tell Galahad the news. She wandered happily to the stable where her magnificent spotted horse stood resting in his stall. Kit had an automatic love for the animal. For it was present the day he had met Ella. The horse walked up to them at once. Galahad, look, do you remember Mr. Kit? He's here and has offered for us to go with and live with him. Would you like to come too? Mr. Goose, Mr. Lizard and the mice have all said yes, but our little family wouldn't be complete if you stayed behind. The horse shook his mane and whinnied at her. Ella laughed, of course there will be all the oats, carrots and apples you can eat. The horse nickered in response. Ella's eyes were alight in pure joy as she turned to Kit. He says he'll come. Excellent, Kit grinned, reaching out to rub the horse's nose. It would be an honour to have you, Galahad. Ella, why don't you and go and gather your things? I'll make sure these fine ladies and gentlemen make it to the carriage. Oh, would you? She asked. Kit chuckled before kissing her cheek again. It would be a privilege, my darling. 
All right, she muttered, her adorable pink cheeks staining red. I won't be long. Handing over Mr. Lizard, she disappeared into the house through the back door. It took a minute for Kit to remember himself. Right, he muttered, staring down at the lizard and goose. Shall we? Opening the stable door, he looked around for a bridle before remembering that Ella had just ridden Galahad without one. Um, I suppose you'll just follow me? Asked the horse. The horse nodded its head. All right then, let's go. He walked out of the stable, Galahad and Mr. Goose and the mice trailing along behind him, and Mr. Lizard climbed up onto his arm to rest it on his shoulder. The men didn't know what to think when they saw him being followed by such a strange array of animals. The captain had an amused look on his face while Cap the Grand Duke just stood beside him, not knowing what to do. Kit ignored their stares as he reached the carriage and opened the door. Mr. Lizard ran down his sleeve before disappearing inside while the mice climbed up the wheels. Following suit, Gus Gus having a harder time than the others, but still managing to keep up. Mr. Goose flapped his wings to give him a boost, flying inside with several squawks. Kit turned to find Galahad staring behind. I am afraid the carriage isn't big enough for you, my friend, he said with a slight smile. Galahad shook his head before returning to wait for Ella on foot. Captain Alistair walked over to him and cleared his throat. Um, sire, you do realise you just let a goose get inside the carriage. A large smirk appeared on Kit's face. Yes, Captain, I am well aware. Captain Alistair didn't know what else to say, so he shut his mouth and nodded to himself. It took everything Kit had not to laugh. His friend probably thought he was going mad. Ella reappeared in the entrance of the house with a small box in hand. Kit couldn't believe that was all she had. He'd been expecting at least a bag of some sort, but she carried all that she carried was that tiny wooden box. He watched as she paused to stroke her hand against the door frame, a sad expression clouding her ashen face. The men were drawn to her presence as well, all beholding the girl who was to be their queen with silent interest, all except the Grand Duke, who looked upon her in contempt. Kit frowned. Something was going to have to be done about him, but that didn't. But that matter could be attended to later. Walking up the path, he held out his hand. Ella, my darling, shall we? Ella's sad countenance changed dramatically, her face practically glowing as she happily took his hand in hers. Please, she muttered. Kit helped her into the carriage. A moment, my lady, if you please. Of course, she said. He shut the door and motioned to Captain Alistair. I don't want those women left unattended in that house. Something more is going on here. I'd like to get to the bottom of it without running them running off somewhere that should justice need to be involved. Agreed. Captain Alistair said. Kit, they had her locked up in the attic. The woman said she was her mother, but the girl denied it. Then the lady called her a wretch. Captain, Kit scrawled. If I had my way, I would interrogate them all this instant. But now is not the time. I want some of the men to stay behind. Give the order. What of the Grand Duke? Kit glanced over at the man who was staring at them unable to hear their words, but fearing them anyway. He will ride back to the car palace with us, and I will personally deal with him. I'll see to it that he remains, that he makes it there. Captain Alistair promised. Kit grasped his shoulder. Thank you, my friend. The captain grinned. A pleasure, sire. Now you best get in that carriage before your lady friend magically disappears. Hmm? Frightened by this prospect, Kate ha Kit hastened to the carriage while Captain Alistair laughed lightly behind him. He needn't have worried though, for Ella was still sitting there, sit sitting with her box of keepsakes on her lap, surrounded by her animal friends. Sire, what about the horse? Victor asked, pointing to Galahad. Kit grinned. I don't think he'll wander off. Let him walk freely beside the carriage. Climbing inside, he wrapped his knuckles against the soft wood, indicating to the driver that now they were ready to depart. Normally, as a gentleman, I would sit across from you. But would it be terrible if I sit beside you, Ella? She shook her head. Not at all, Your Majesty. Please, call me Kit, he invited. We are to be married, after all. Very well, Mr. Kit. She said with a soft grin. Kit smirked. She was playing with him. I am hardly a mister, surely. Ella laughed, her soft voice resounding like the purest resonating chimes. <laughs> if you say so. Kit, she finally indulged him. 
Kit's heart took off and he breathed a sigh of pleasure. He had never felt this way before when someone had spoken his name. Like it was, he was filled with an inner fire. He unconsciously took Ella's hand and began to rub smooth, soothing circles against her knuckles. She leaned her head against his shoulder, letting out a deep sigh. The sound belonging to someone who was obviously incredibly exhausted. Kit glanced at her, then down at the box she was protectively holding. Her mice had taken refuge within the glass slipper, which was now resting inside the box. Mr. Lizard had also was inside, nestling against a picture frame in and a corner. Mr. Goose was happily curled up at the floor by Ella's feet, his head buried under his wing. Kit stared at them all with fascination and a hint of sadness for Ella calling them her family. And that caused him to wonder why they were the only creatures in the world she associated with. Again, he puzzled over what had been done to her and why she appeared the way she was. He wanted to ask her, but knew the timing still wasn't right. He was pulled from his thoughts by her timid, sweet voice. If you don't mind me asking, she muttered against him, what happens now? Well, the royal staff will undoubtedly be waiting for us to welcome you. Bella stiffened and she sat up straight. Kit eyed her with concern. What's wrong? Nothing, she said, shaking her head quickly. Ella, he prompted. Her fingers ran along the edges of the box in her lap and she swallowed, unable to meet his eyes. Usually, I'd be more sure of myself. But what if they don't like me? Kit took her hand. Ella, they will love you. How do you know? Because you are beautiful, courageous and kind. Simply be you, and I promise you'll be the belle of the palace. She smiled and finally looked over at him. Really? Kit kissed her cheek. Really? They rode in silence for a few minutes, simply enjoying each other's company before Kit had a terrible thought. Biting his lip, he gently squeezed Ella's hand. Ella? Yes? Before we reach the palace, there is something I want to know. Okay. Kit took her other hand before gently covering them between his own. You said you would marry me, but I want to know, is this really what you want? Do you really want to be with me? Of course I do, she said with such firm conviction that he forgot for a moment how frail she was. I want to be with you more than anything. Are you certain? Kit pressed. I am King Ella, and by marrying you, you will be the Queen. Don't misunderstand. I will be the happiest man in existence to have you by my side. But I don't want to pressure you into accepting such a burdensome title if it will make you uncomfortable. Ella stared at him with a hard expression before leaning forward and kissing him forcefully on the mouth. I will wage through anything if it means I can stand with you, Kit, she replied passionately, all her conviction speaking volumes from her eyes. I'll endure the lessons required to refine me into a woman fit to rule by your side. And we'll do so with courage, kindness, and a willing heart for you are worth all of the hardships that life can bestow upon me. Kit was temporarily speechless. Such passion he had not been expecting from her, and she was clearly fatigued. Warmth coursed through his soul, and he leaned forward to kiss her again, softer this time, conveying his adoration for her. You astound me, he muttered, softly stroking her cheek. I think I just fell in love with you all over again. Ella blushed deeply. It is a mutual feeling. Kit grinned. Just so. In that case, we shall be the happiest couple in all the world, and the envy of every man in the kingdom, and woman. I hope not, Ella giggled. I would rather be an example than an object of envy, wouldn't you? The lady has a fair point, Kit praised, kissing the back of her hand. You will be the best queen this land has ever seen. I hope so, she muttered. But for now, let's just focus on what's going on today. Right, Kit said, leaning back. Well, like I said, the Royal Guard will want to meet with you, and I suppose we'll have to have a light dinner, and I'll force you to retire for the, for the night. Don't think I didn't notice before, my darling, but you appear to be exhausted. The last thing I want is to make you ill, especially after having to hunt for you for so long. I appreciate your kindness, but what about you? 
Touched, Kit squeezed her hand gently. There is no need to worry over me, Ella. There are always things to do when you are the king. That caused her to frown. If that is so, won't I be distracting you from your duties? I don't want to be a bother. Kit lifted her chin with his finger before lightly kissing her on the cheek. Ella, if there is one thing I want you to be clear on from here on out, it is that you are never, nor will you ever be, a bother to me. Every, even a king, needs reprieve from his duties. And believe me, you will always be the sunshine of my day. So please do not feel the way you do now. She looked up at him, unshed tears brimming in her deep brown eyes. What have I done to deserve you? Kit smiled at her tenderly, wiping a stray tear that stubbornly decided to fall. I think the correct question, my darling, is what have I done to deserve you? End of chapter 13. Hi guys, hope you enjoyed that. That was flipping gorgeous. I normally don't read romances because I find it hard to get behind the characters. But good flipping lord, someone get me a man like King Kit. Good god wow just wow and seeing that him like piecing the pe pieces together captain alistair's sass over the whole situation with him also picking up everything the stepmother and the stepsisters and the grand duke and oh hoo, hoo, hoo. we're getting into some of this stuff written by the author himself now well or herself or non-binary i don't mind anyway um yeah just it's just great i love this so much so yeah, have a good day, night, or whatever time zone you're in. Bye, my guys, gals, and non-binary pals. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that bell to get notified whenever I upload a new video. Bye!